Well, hey, hey, hey. Hello, everybody. Welcome to an all 80s movie edition of Swag Bucks Live. Couple shout outs before we get started here. 80s lover, surprise, surprise, is a huge 80s fan. Worried about whether you're going to do well. I'm sure you will do well. Don't put pressure on yourself. This is supposed to be fun. Chiefs for the win, saying Breakfast Club is the best 80s movie. You know what you do when you mess with the Bulls? Chiefs for the win? Mess with the bull, you get the horns. That's right. Hannah Martin is an 80s baby and is trying to summon Beetlejuice. Almost made it through three times. Thank goodness you didn't, Hannah. Please. Hello, Sizemo. Also, Amp1773 is hoping there's some pretty in the pink in the game. A lot of John Hughes lovers out there. We got the Breakfast Club. We got pretty in pink. Bessie's out here for Bueller. Bueller. Anybody? Bueller. Jay Turpin thinks that there'll be obscure and impossible questions. And you know, I got to say, Jay Turpin, number one, not true. There may be some tough ones in there, but... You're probably going to know a bunch of them, but that just sounds like stinking thinking to me. We don't do stinking thinking around here. Swag Bucks Live. Come up with a positive attitude. You can do well. You're going to kick butt. I know you will. So believe in yourself, okay? Art Da Vinci is shouting out desperately seeking Susan some early Madonna film action for you. Sure. Why not? Why not desperately seeking Susan? Also, Amy the Veg shouting out a trio of Eddie Murphy movies from the 80s. 48 Hours, his first big starring film, Trading Places, and Beverly Hills Cop. Each of them a classic, and Mitch769 misses the 80s and wants to go back, back to the future. Something's got to be done about your kids. But before we do that, happy VCR day, everyone. Let's turn back the clock to a time when VCRs freely roamed the earth. With this 80s movies edition of Swag Bucks Live, the mobile game show where you win money from the comfort of your phone. As you can see, we've got our snacks, our Reese's Pieces, our popcorn, our soda. And it's time to be kind and rewind your memory as you go after today's grand prize that's $1,000, and if you can correctly answer all 10 of our multiple-choice trivia questions about 80s movies, you will win a share of it. Now, in this game, you will also earn one bonus SB for every question you get right after question number one, even if you've already been eliminated. Now, if you are eliminated from grand prize contention, you will need to claim your bonus SB at the end of the game in order to keep them but don't worry, that's as simple as clicking a button that appears at the end of the game. What I'm saying is stay till the end no matter what. If you're a grand prize winner, all the bonus SB you earn will be rolled into your share of that $1,000 grand prize. So stick around no matter what. Either stick around to earn bonus SB and claim them or stick around to win your piece of the grand prize. And you won't have to claim anything. You'll just get it right away. For now, why don't we press eject on the comments and get them out of here. Goodbye. And hit play on the game. Here is question number one. E.T. the Extraterrestrial was one of the early movies for what actress? Is it Leah Thompson, Drew Barrymore, or Dakota Fanning? This is not her debut film, but it is the one that made her the most famous, that's for sure. She'd already made her acting debut a few years earlier, but it was her role as Gertie that really put Drew Barrymore on the map, and she is still with us today, of course. Still a huge star. 95% of you getting that one right. Awesome! Well done. Only 5% of you getting eliminated. But I see that all of you have rejoined, it looks like, and a lot of our latecomers. We have almost 30,000 people in grand prize contention, and that is what we like to see around here. I think we could get to 30,000 because we, we have some of our stragglers. Sometimes people come in a little late, and that's okay. Uh, you know, some people are late but worth the wait. And I just, uh, here we go. We're getting there. We're about to hit it. I just want us to get there. There you go, 30,000 people in grand prize contention. Let's move on to question number two. It's worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Which of these Star Wars movies premiered in the 1980s? Was it A New Hope, Rise of Skywalker, or Return of the Jedi? Only one of these three premiered in the 1980s. Which one was it? At the time, we thought it was the final film in the Star Wars saga, but we've gotten two more entire trilogies and two standalone films after 
1983's Return of the Jedi. Oh, 45% of you getting that one right, but unfortunately, that means 55% of you were just eliminated. I think we're going to get a lot of rejoins. Let me clear some stuff up. A New Hope came out in 1977. That is the original Star Wars. And Rise of Skywalker came out in 2019. That was the... It was the end of the third trilogy, which is the sequel trilogy to the original trilogy. A fun Return of the Jedi story as people rejoin. There's a lot of people doing that. My parents took me out of school just to go see that movie during the day. We went with I went with my parents and my grandmother. We packed our own snacks. We had cut up watermelon and chips, and it was the greatest. Just a, such a happy memory tied to Return of the Jedi. From 1983, that was when it premiered. All right, folks, we've had the majority of people out rejoin. Still over 27,000 people in grand prize contention, and we are on to question number three, worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Which of these Brat Pack movies centers around detention? Is it The Breakfast Club, 16 Candles, or St. Elmo's Fire? Yes, The Brat Pack. Do -do -do Brat Pack. The little ladies. The Brat Pack were young, good-looking, and talented performers who were constantly working together during the 80s in different films, including spending a Saturday in detention in, yes, I mentioned it during the pregame, The Breakfast Club. That is the answer. And I said, nah, 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 nah. You're raising your arm in victory right now, frozen on the football field. 96% of you getting that one right. Well done. That is what I like to see. I say we just move on from here to question number four. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. What is the motto of the Goonies? Is it Goonies are good enough? Goonies never say die or let's get Goonie. Which of those is the motto of the Goonies? Classic film directed by Richard Donner. You got Sean Astin, Corey Feldman, a young Josh Brolin. Come on. Up there, it's their time. It's their time up there. Down here, it's our time. It's our time down here. All that ends the second we ride up Troy's bucket. And they don't, of course. Why? Because Goonies never say die. That is the answer. 95% of you getting that one right. And Andy says, I'm not a Goonie. I want to go up there. But she doesn't. She doesn't because Troy's not cool. She just sends her sweater up the bucket. Sorry if that's a spoiler. The movie has been out for almost 40 years, so you had your chance to see it. Let's move on to question number five worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Which 1980s movie features a character saying, I feel the need, the need for speed? Is it Days of Thunder, The Cannonball Run, or Top Gun? Where do they feel that need for speed? In the vast ocean of 80s films, this one might be the most 80s. It has everything. Patriotism, fighter jets, Tom Cruise and shirtless volleyball. Yes, that's right. Top Gun is the answer. 88% of you getting that one right. Well done for the 12% of you who were limited. I'm sorry, Days of Thunder. They are racing around. That is true. The Cannonball Run, they also go pretty fast, but you don't feel the need like you do in Top Gun. And of course, Top Gun now, the sequel's out. Everybody seems to love it. I've not seen it yet, but I've heard wonderful things. So if you've seen it, let us know in the comments if it's good, but no spoilers, please. No spoilers at all. Thank you. All right, let's move on to question number six. We're halfway done with this game. Still have 23,000 plus people vying for a piece of that grand prize. Here is Q6 worth one bonus SB. What famous comedian turned down a role as one of the original Ghostbusters? Was it John Candy, Eddie Murphy, or Steve Martin? Was offered the role of one of the four Ghostbusters and turned it down. Who was it? It's kind of lore, right? If he had joined, it would have made sense, given his history with Dan Aykroyd working on Trading Places, which we mentioned earlier. But Eddie Murphy turned that opportunity down, and instead we got Ernie Hudson doing great work as Winston Zeddemore. 72% of you getting that one right. Well done. That was a tough one, but you did really well. Kind of hard to imagine Eddie Murphy in that film with all of those people, just how the energy would have been, him and Bill Murray going back and forth. That could have been a lot of fun, but I love Ernie Hudson's take on the character. Ernie Hudson is a fantastic actor and very funny in his own right. He's not Eddie Murphy. Nobody else is. There's only one Eddie Murphy, but Ernie Hudson, 
he's pretty awesome too. All right, let's move on to question number seven. We had over half of the people out come back in. Still over 20,000 people in grand prize contention. And guess what? There are only four questions left in this 1980s movies game. Let's move on to question number seven now. Worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here is Q7. What musician starred in the 1980s movie Purple Rain? Was it Prince, Michael Jackson, or Madonna? Who starred in Purple Rain? This movie is a cult classic, but the songs from the soundtrack are iconic, featuring more of Prince's best work. More of it than maybe 1988's Under the Cherry Moon, but hey, it's fine. Prince is the answer. Almost everybody getting that one right, of course. Yes. Then, uh, you know, I don't know who saw Under the Cherry Moon. I feel like Purple Rain is the better movie as well. Better movie, better soundtrack. We can all forget Under the Cherry Moon. It's fine. Let's move on to question number eight right now, shall we? It's worth one bonus SP if you get it right. Here is Q8. A headshot of Molly Ringwald inspired John Hughes to write which movie? Is it Pretty in Pink, Some Kind of Wonderful, or Sixteen Candles? Saw her headshot and was like, I'm going to write this movie. Molly Ringwald was the it girl of the 80s. She had the look, the talent, and was unknowingly amused in the creation of one of her early hits, and John Hughes as well. 16 Candles is the answer. 70% of you getting that one right. Well done. Now, she almost didn't get the role. There were a lot of other actresses who were considered for it. I think Laura Dern might have been one of them, but she wound up getting the role. She was the one who inspired John Hughes to even write the script. And first, they just looked at her and was like, oh, what would this character, let's create a, something based on how this woman looks. She looks like a teenager and do this. And then, you know, look, if somebody writes a script based off of you and you don't get the starring role in it, there might be a problem. We still have about 16,000 people in grand prize contention. Only two questions remaining. The rest of you stick around, earn more bonus SP, and claim them at the end. Because one bonus SP could be yours if you correctly answer question number nine. Here it is. Which of these movies won the Oscar for Best Picture during the 1980s? Was it Dances with Wolves, Kramer vs. Kramer, or Amadeus? Only one of these is an 80s movie. Only one of them. Which one? All three of these films took home Best Picture, but it was Michael Cimino's The Deer Hunter that did it in 1979. Dances with Wolves won in 1991, but Amadeus won smack dab in the middle, 1985, and we have 6,073 people who have made it this far and are ready for our final question. That was a tough one, but you know what's easy? I'm going to tell you. Going back to school, students around the world are graduating right now, and it's time for you to graduate too with the fourth and final Swagbucks University of this semester. School is in session tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern time, noon Pacific time, or Thursday rather, Thursday, not tomorrow. Thursday, June 9th, 3 p.m. Eastern time, noon Pacific time. It's your opportunity to earn as you learn about Swagbucks. The games do not get easier than those. They're a lot of fun, plenty of bonus SP to earn, and a grand prize that you can win some of too. It is fast, fun, easy, and you just might learn something. So stop by for that game, please. That is on Thursday. But for now, if you're someone who wants to take better care of their money, I have a great offer for you. When you open an online Chime account, you get a Chime Visa debit card, a spending account, an optional savings account, and access to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Also, enjoy access to 60,000 plus fee-free ATMs. When you set up payroll direct deposit and get paid within 30 days of opening your account, you'll earn 25,000 SB. You have to be a U.S. player to take advantage of this opportunity, so get started today, please. Okay, here we go, folks. It is time for our final question. There are 7,511 people vying for a piece of our $1,000 grand prize. Almost 30,000 of you stuck with us to the very end, and you can earn one more bonus SB right now if you correctly answer Question number 10. Here it is. What is the name of Al Pacino's character in Scarface? Is it Tony Montana, Tony Nevada, or Tony California? What is the name of that character? Think about the most quoted movie lines and say hello to my little friend comes up, which is a phrase uttered in Scarface by Al Pacino's 
Tony Montana. Tony Montana is the answer. 7,267 people knew that answer and are splitting our grand prize. Well done to each and every one of you. You are each taking home 14 SB in grand prize money, plus the bonuses you earned along the way. E Grundy one, I'm looking at you. Ray Strella, you are a winner as well. Amy3618, you are a winner, as is Emily Gonzalez815 and Jacqueline Glover and Banks Katrina476. Hey, congratulations to all of the people who won this game. I wish I could name every single one of you, but it would take too long. Congratulations to all of you. You have all these new SB in your account. You know what to do with them, right? Yeah. Redeem them for PayPal cash or gift cards to Amazon, Starbucks, Target, and hundreds of other places. Thank you for playing along and winning, everyone, including those of you who won bonus SB and claimed them just now. You are winners as well. We will see you tomorrow for another round. This has been Swagbucks Live, and we are out of here.